Hey guys, it's Mystical Storms here with uh, chapter 8 of Well He, well, he Tried, um, and the name of this chapter is The Dreams of Childhood. So, let's get started. <laughs> the next time he met Shinzo was a few days later when the whole thing, the whole getting stabbed in a light fiasco, it felt like it had been weeks since he lost his friend. Yeah, friend, that still sounded weird to him. But nonetheless, he felt giddy. To meet him, or better yet, beat the shit out of him they called training. It was fun, throwing each other around in the middle of the trash mountains where no one could, could go and tell them not to do that. Sparring or teaching how to spar with Shinzo was fun. He was not an expert and probably fucked up at least 70% of, of the moves he showed the other teen which would be dangerous and very irresponsible of him, but he didn't care, and as far as he knew, Shinzo didn't either. Fighting the correct way didn't always mean victory, especially if Shinzo was going to work with his quirk, that, that would have been, that would mean he had to rely on shit ton of hand-to-hand -hand fighting and fighting dirty. To get somewhere, not, every, not everyone would fall for his quirk, despite how stupidly powerful and convenient it was. The world wasn't fair, and the distribution of the ins insane meta power wasn't either. Izuku would, Izuku would know. With that in mind, Izuku had to set had set out of the house with one of with one of his less full notebooks in hand. One that didn't hold his plans for his plans to overtake some random gang and a note and made a note to finally ask Shinzo more about his quirk than just basics. Of course he didn't need to he didn't need to he didn't need that much to devil delve into full analysis analysis crap and write a ten page about the brain brainwash and he and he and he'd done that already. Theories after theories Flying around, using his hands and and his cramped around until his hands cramped and pen ran it, ran out of ink. Betraying his trail of trail of thought and having reread everything he wrote in in chicken scratch to find his way back. But he had to he had the chance to ask Shinzo more about it, either denying or confirming his theories. And perhaps doing so much, doing some experiments of his own. Izuku really wanted to ask Shinzo to brainwash him. It would be something. Maybe it would make his mind shut up for once. The sparring process as normal, or as normal as it could be. Shinzo arrived tired and very much asleep on his feet. It amused Izuku to no end, but he briefly wondered how he, how it was to live a normal teenage life where getting up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday was considered a, ta a task of, his, of the devil itself. He didn't know how it, was, how it was to be a teenager or a kid, really, so these moments were a piece of what he didn't have. Shinzo let him have those moments of normality, which was all fine and dandy, but to some extent, Izuku was fearing that, just, that it was just momentary and a thing that would pass. As far as Izuku was concerned, the moment Shinzo stepped into UA, the relationship would break like nothing. Yue was demanding and Shinzo would be occupied, trying to do his best to be a hero, he could, the best hero he could be, while Izuku would keep on running around playing his part as a villain until time ticked out and he was behind bars. Especially now, and it seemed more likely than ever, the heroes were actually paying attention to him. Who knew? As, Sh as Shinzo became a sidekick of some hero, he would be the one to arrest Izuku. Alas, Izuku enjoyed that they had enjoyed what they had while they had the chance. He hadn't gone out an at night since that day, mostly reco recovering from whatever was that whatever was that night, catching up with his school and s sitting back. And sitting away his breakdowns in the silence of his cold house. Perhaps 
He was afraid of stepping his foot outside. Fear struck him, not that he admitted it. Twisting away from, from Shinzo's approach to tackle him to the ground, Izuku took the back of Shinzo hoodie, Shinzo's hoodie and pulled him over his shoulder. Shinzo landed in the leap of limb. Shinzo landed in a heap, heap of limbs and loud runs and yelling, of giving, of giving up. Being a teacher, teenager once, is in, in a way, you know, being a teenager once in a while felt awesome. I'm feeling better. Izuku smiled, grunting as Shinzo clasped his hand, to pull himself up until his weight, using his weight to pull Izuku off his balance. Flattering. Will you get? Fluttering. Will you get nowhere, Midoriya? Fluttery will get you nowhere, Midoriya. Shinzo only s sniffled, brushing sand off his clothes and stumbling to a straight piece of straight piece of a couch, settling down, drawing his head back, his log his log groan conveying how tired he was. Then for the day, Hizuku found the other the other half of the couch and plopped down in a much in a much same manner, he pulled his leg that pulls his leg up and crossed them, tucking them under his feet. Please, the day I will not end up on my ass at least eighty percent of the round. We do it. The round we do it. The we do it the day, and I enjoy. Please, that please that day I will not end up on my ass at least eighty percent of the round. We do is a day. I enjoy fighting you, Mido. Mido. Shizo grunted, throwing his arms over his eyes, dramatically, dramatic to the very last bone. Mido? Is he going to tell his head? Nickname? Yeah, I would say Midori, you know, because you're green, but it feels too long. Shizo shrugged, running his hand through his. through his. running his hands through his hand like he wasn't just like he hasn't just caused Izuku's stomach to flip upside down in an unfamiliar feeling. I see. Izuku mumbled, leaning on his hands and rested and rested on his tie, unsure where to, to take from what not sure what to take from that. Next name nicknames were something new. The whole villain agenda was based around nickname shortened from Akatani, but but it's not like he was giving them by someone else. It wasn't like he was given them by that by someone else. He himself decided. Now, it felt more like his name than a nickname anyway. So, maybe these cases weren't as similar as he thought. Nicknames given by friends. Izuku pressed his lips together. That's that was new and welcome. He hasn't figured out out the twist. The twisting in his insides, but he didn't have the time to dwell on the feeling. Are we done for today? Shinzo had pulled him out of his mind. Not at all bothered to, not at all bothered by Izuku's silence after the revelation of his new nickname. Perhaps for him it was a fairly normal thing, but for Izuku, it should be too. Yami, Deku. Momentarily stunned, Izuku snorted to himself. How could you forget Deku? That was his first nickname he'd ever gotten. Actually, been given by someone who considered his friend. Ex-friend, that is. Eventually, the nickname turned into an insult, and yeah, maybe it was a different thing, but Izuku sighed instead, pulling his gaze to look at Shinzo, who was watching him with his eyebrow raised. Mido? Izuku inside still, twi inside still twisted as he hummed in instead. I asked if you were done for today. Izuku rolled, Shinzo rolled his shoulders. Ah, oh, right, sorry, I lost my thoughts. If you want to, sure. Izuku licked his lips, feeling the awkward cre awkwardness creep up on his insides. He wasn't good with people if he wasn't threatening them. He wasn't good with people if he wasn't threatening them. I have a, I have the choice between going home and plopping on the bed for a well-deserved rest or going somewhere and beat, beat up by some scrawny fourteen-year-old. Let me think. That this one might be hard. Izuku burst out laughing, throwing his head back. Shinzo, Shinzo's own laughter follows soon after. 
Maybe he wasn't good at people, but Shinzo wasn't that much either. But that was alright. They could joke and Izuku would laugh at laugh to the point of losing his breath. If he pushed his awkwardness down, he pushed away every insecurities he had and enjoyed these moments as much as he could for a little while. They giggled until one of them fell down the couch, setting a, co a cloud of sand in the air. His cat clutched his stomach as he tried to breathe properly, bursting into some more laughter as Shinzo grunted, trying to stand up but his arms buckled, most likely from using them too much on the last two, uh, for the last two hours and went down again. If you don't stop, I'm gonna piss myself, Izuku rasped out, grabbing the couch as he laughed his lungs out. His throat ache and his eyes water. He was sh he was very short on air, but he on air, but couldn't stop giggling and chuckling to himself. Shinzo was in hard behind, laying in the sand. Come on, me, come on now, Mido. Let's not laugh at my lack of coordinate coordination. Ugly snorts were tumbling out of Izuku. You're laughing too. He tried to settle down, but to no avail. Tears gathered in Izuku's eyes, unsure if it was just laughter or weird emotions swaying in his body. Not knowing where to go or what to do, he never felt this free. And it startled him enough to calm down. A familiarity was always, always, a familiarity was always a way for Izuku to startle back into his defense, that he would so easily let go around the other boy. Okay, okay, I'm calm. He leaned his armrest on a ragged couch and wiped his tears away, watching as Shinzo got back on his on his half of a couch and taking a deep breath. Izuku felt his heart thumps loudly, blood rushing in his ears as he exhales. Hiccuping briefly, in hiccuping briefly, he licked his lips as Shinzo gathered himself on a couch, fumbling with his phone. It was getting late. Noon crawling slowly to the doorstep, to the doorstep, and yet Izuku didn't want to go. He wanted to bask in these moments of calm and zero worries, where he didn't have to play a role that. Either you have him, either would have him behind bars or breaking down in tears and screams for help. Say Shinzo, he gulped. He still had too much to do. What's up? The other teen hummed, completely oblivious to Izuku's panic. Izuku envied that, the obliviousness of humanity. The more one, the more one knew, the more miserable they felt. Izuku had read somewhere that the more realistic people perseverance in life was, the more depressed and sadder they felt overall. He wasn't surprised that he felt and in fell into that category. Before you go home, can I ask you a few questions about your quirk? Izuku bit his lip, hoped Shinzo wouldn't reject his proposal. The first time they had met, Izuku already revealed how ner about his nerdy side completely completely geeking out on Shinzo's quirk in the middle of the street. He hoped that he didn't it he hoped he hadn't made him wary of Izuku's excitement. Not that that would be the first time that is Why? He simply raised his eyebrow putting his phone in his jacket sitting straight up. Izuku jumped off the couch and smiled. Here, let me he rushed his bag, pulling out his notes and pen, stumbling back to Shinzo, slowly realizing how weird this really was. He extended his notes to the other boy, explaining and rushing out of him. Explanation rushing out of him right away. I do some here on ass analysis, of course. You're not a hero, but still, I do um, other people too, and your quirk is pretty cool. Izuku mumbled along as Shinzo flew through his notes. Eyebrows raised as he skipped through every page, stopping a little longer with each one. Iz Izuku gripped his own hand hard, roaring lips between his teeth. What would Shinzo say? No, yes, he didn't want his friend. He didn't want to be friends with Shinzo anymore. That Izuku should stop. Should stop his weird habits. Whoa! He softly breathed, breathed out. And Izuku gulped, twiding the pen, unsure of his reaction. What it really meant? Can I? He cleared his throat, looking at Shinzo, who glanced up at Izuku's notes. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Izuku breathed out, breathed out, and his heart thumping in weird ways. It was ex he was excited. He would 
properly properly analyze Shinzo's quirk. Cool. He walked back into his sheet, handshaking in excitement. It had been so long since he had the opportunity to ask someone directly, especially with mind quirks. Those were so rare, and Izuku had only three, three others in all the volumes of notes. This would be the fourth. This would be fourth and probably the most exciting, in, throughout. Honestly, Mido, Izuku flicked his gaze, so Shinzo flashed a smile. If you didn't tell me you didn't want to be a hero, your dedication to learning how to fight and analysis, analysis. Sizing heroes would make me believe it's a hundred percent. Izuku laughed awkwardly. Yeah, Izuku gripped his pen and pushed on his old ideas. He had, he had of being hero, and the awkward, and that awkwardly hung in his mind that day. Hero analysis was the only driven to become a. He hero analysis was the only drive to become a hero. Not the, sh not that it shifted. It was only a reminder that Izuku couldn't have. Of what Izuku couldn't have. Ah, yeah. It's a bit weird, is it? It's a bit weird, isn't it? No, not really. Just Izuku shrugged, getting up, stretching his back, coming to sit beside Izuku. His movements only slightly timid and unsure. Izuku felt at ease, though Shinzo being just as awkward at him. I bet you'd make a terrifying villain, though. At Izuku's heart skipped the beat, and he cleared his throat. Clutching his nose. Why do you say that? Was it was he that obvious? Have you seen your analysis? That like top tier stuff. In the wrong hands, it would do so much danger. Ah, right. In the wrong hands, his analysis could do could take down empires of underground. He may not be able to do it on his own, and he necessarily seek out the power of control of the whole underground. And yet, he knew he had enough information for people on people, on heroes, to take them down instantly. That's true, I guess. Sorry, I didn't mean to imply. Shinzo stared to apologetically, but Shinzo, but Izuku beat him to it. No, 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 it's fine. He chuckled. It's fine. He wasn't wrong. Really? Izuku bit his lip, and he just hoped Shinzo would never find out about his other side. Just an interesting perspective, that's all. He hoped the other teen would have seen Izuku lose his mind in some random rooftop beating out some bills, beating the shit out of a hero. Something that seemed to be crawling up Izuku's skin if things continued to go the way they were. He was patient and, did, and didn't seek out violence, but lately the world has been tilting just enough for his morals to go oh, haywires more than before. Where do we start? Shinzo broke his silence and he settled between them. How about first hand first hand experience? Izuku <laughs> grinned and opened the fresh page of his notes. Huh? Brainwash me for a second. Shin uh, Izuku grinned. Izuku grimaced as he entered the bar he left in disarray not too long ago, but a meeting was set in wandering around a warehouse with had been had been far too dangerous lately, so more scheduled space was needed. Unfortunately, Izuku knew that being wanted through the country would affect his movement, but damn, he didn't expect it to change the way he was op uh, the way he operated. It was very annoying. Garen had called. How 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 has he got Izuku's numbers? He didn't know and didn't want to know. Izuku was sh Izuku was sure Garen had some stuff on him just as much as Izuku had on the older man, but it didn't make it didn't make any more com it didn't make it any more comforting. Letting anything slip about him was just plain unwanted in his on Izuku's list. The familiar familiarity of people surrounding him was just getting on his nerves. Who who knew what else was being said about him in regards to his identity, quirk and anything really. Garen had been clear that the meeting at this bar would give him the desired comfort confidence in patrons patrons wouldn't bother him, but Izuku still snuck a glance at the people sitting around all watching him. There was still it both very exhilarant and terrifying. 
Izuku wasn't sure which one he liked the most, which one he liked more. But a meeting was a meeting, especially if he had been waiting for had been waiting for ages. Overhaul in his whole Shihisaikai gang was ready to pay him up front and give him the first ta tasks finally. It took them long enough for Izuku, but Izuku couldn't complain. He'd rather enjoy not having to think about it, about the Yakuza, while he had his own shit to deal with. He just wanted to get this over with. Izuku, quite frankly, had been regretting his choice to say yes every day. The more he dug up about the Yakuza, the shittier he felt. He knew what he did. He knew he did. What he knew he did wrong, but his wrong had lines he didn't cross, even if they seemed to start blur, start to blur lately. And yet the Shihisaikai were towing the line on the daily, and Izuku was starting to very much try and find his way out of this whole mess without allowing the Yakuza to benefit from him. It was a plan in motion he had no safe answer to. He tried to go for the not dying option, but none of the ideas he'd gotten up with didn't include him slicing his neck at least a few times within the next week. He wasn't mentally prepared for that quite yet. Should he be in the situation a few months earlier, he'd do it, maybe. Now, fat chance. He, he was more inclined to be one s slicing someone else's neck than his own. Izuku shook his his head, giving getting rid of his whole, getting rid of the whole idea. He wasn't sure what was going on, but ever since the day of passing out and creating havoc, something had changed. He only had to figure it out. He only had to figure that out. He had only, he only had to figure out what. Hey, Garen. Izuku had slipped onto the stool in a familiar meeting room. He'd never, he'd not so accidentally broke into. The floor had been cleaned of his blood, and the broken stool taken away to the door, and the door repaired. Despite that, he'd seen the way the patrons watched him, watch him enter. Their gaze snapping at every moment he set foot into the bar. The guy he threatened was there too, shrinking just a bit as he moved past the table the guy sat at. Izuku paid him no mind, making his way to the meeting room, perfectly aware of how the talking only resumed until he clicked the door shut. Vanished away from their sight, he knew enough to know that the topics of all the tables would be about him till the moment he left the room. Yami didn't make his deal public, so this was familiar, fairly new to others, as much as it was to himself. Izuku simply had no choice but to move cautiously, and that exposed him to the underground world a bit more. He'd hoped it in the long run more than he'd hoped in the long run, but if he had to take being captured by some lousy hero on a Tuesday right Tuesday night to being the topic of every tug in Mustafu, he'd take the latter. Maybe some good would come out of it, he hoped. He really hoped that this whole thing wouldn't backfire. He was thinking about taking a small vacation of the whole Yakuza thing just for a little while. Yami, how's your leg? Oh, you know, as good as new. I didn't even hurt that much. Garen quirked his eyebrows, eyebrow at him, very well knowing that it was a lie because it hurt like a bitch from start to finish and even aches a few days after that. Not fun, not recommended. He'd rather not repeat it if he could. Really, if he wanted to hurt himself in that in the near future, he would find other ways to do so. Less messy and less traumatizing. On others or on others or himself. That was yet to be decided, but that was beside the whole point, as Garen barked out a laugh. <laughs> that was spectacular, he he grinned. Patting Izuku's back. Izuku frowned at his touch, but let himself slip against the bar counter. Counter of the the bar counter of the room. It used to be an old main 
portion of the bar. Izuku rather enjoyed the room despite being here only second, only the second time. At least now, he would actually look, look around and take in every detail without having to focus on the fact that he was very close to fainting. What was? Izuku asked. Fang in a sense like he didn't know the shit he caused. That beyond his ass in the past few days, either laughing his lungs out at home at fun at funny the whole out at home as funny the whole shit was, at least from what he heard, or acting like like a mutter hand because he was so fucking reckless. Yes, Izuku knew himself knew it himself. The very they were close to Dobby's actions seemed to confuse him completely. They were close, almost brothers, but something felt like building between them. Something felt like building between them. Something dark and uncomfortable. When you broke into my room, I was not expecting you to give such a show. Garen took a drag of a cigarette and blowing, blowing the smoke in Izuku's direction. He joked as Izuku frowned, his eyebrows scrunched together, and as he waved his tan his hand before he was glad he had his mask on. Well, it wasn't really expecting it either, you know, Izuku sighed. It wasn't on his list to do, apparently, but he'd done it. Why'd you, why'd you do that? Garen asked as he tapped the bar top. Hmm? He hummed as watching Garen flip off the ash of a cigarette, implied the rumors were true. He glanced at, uh, at Izuku getting a little... Getting a little serious, Izuku clicked his tongue. Of course, clicked his tongue. Of course, he would bring this up. And what should he say? He didn't want to cause a ruckus. He's already, he'd already done that. Was totally not thinking about what what he was saying. Yep. <sighs> Izuku groaned, running his hands through his hair. That was, that was not exactly planned. Blood loss really messed up in my logic think logical thinking. And just for the, f I just said the first thing that came to my mind. He shrugged. Jiren hugged, hummed at his answer and licked his lips. Izuku grinned and turned away from the man. But is it true? Half of it. Izuku grinned. He knew this would be, viol the widely discussed topic. The r rumors were pretty widespread, for him to go do things like that. He was crazy. It definitely wasn't best idea. It simply made the Targon's back so much bigger. Tugs and gangs getting curious to prove the rumors true. Others wary on him because of his implications. No one wanted to get out of the get on the bad side of someone who can die. Which half you're not gonna tell me. Uh, which half you're not going to tell me. Garen raised his eyebrow as Izuku chuckled on himself. Of course he wouldn't. Nope, you little shit. I did try. Anyway, here. Garen pulls out a packet, pulling it down before Izuku. That's half. That's half? Izuku opened, opened it up, hard lurching in his throat. That was so much money. He had more than he had imagined. He would, that would be a whole job would be around... He thought he, the whole job would be around this, not just a half. What the fuck? She, she is I... Hazaikai didn't play around and based on money, they didn't want Izuku to play around either. As much as you expected, kid? No, definitely the other way around. No, I just... No. Izuku carefully packed, packed on the counter and licked his lips. What the fuck? You're not making much sense here, kid. When do I ever do? Izuku shook his head, clearing his throat and turning to Giren, turning the is business mode on. So, what does overhaul want? How to get a supply of trigger to Miyazashi in Kyushu? As you know, as you know, Yami here, Yami there have been troubling. There have been troubling instances of the police seizing trigger suppliers recently. No one knows when or how the information gets leaked, but it does. The majority of these shipments indirectly or directly affected Shiasaikai. And as a lasting bloom, blooming Yakuza, they rely on those. They need plan. Garen licked his lips and Izuku closed his eyes briefly. A plan? He was fucked. 
so so fucked because guess what who's the one causing the triggers dynasty to fall apart yummy him he was on break he was the one breaking the system and fuck this was gone this wasn't terrifying because the moment people found out he'd be dead to a point even a squirk wouldn't help him a plan to a plan for how to get trigger across the country and not get detected izuku mumbled that what did he just get himself into he was really done he was really done and fucked and fucked up Dobby would be laughing his ass off the moment he heard about this if Izuku told him that that is getting triggered to the other side of the country while the police were twice aware of the illegal shipments when Yami was wanted nah this was a, re- a recipe for disaster and a big one at that think you could get it done what amount of drugs are we talking about the met- meta of transportation involved parties other than Ishida Saikai, time limit, preferred date of transportation. So you could dig out his notes, skipping the page to clear up, clear one, not giving Garen the satisfaction of looking into them. He wrote down the given information, looking at Garen who nodded to himself, pulling out his phone. Now we're talking. Izuku was blown away by the sheer amount of danger and stupidity this whole thing insinuated. There was so much to carry in one drive in a truck no less. Who was he kidding? Having a few packages on in a bag could easily be could easily could easily safely or whatever, but even he knew even he knew that was very much unnecessary. Why are they even moving all of this? Why the poli- with the police being alert, making too much noise would really blow up their blow in their face. That's the business world, kid. Molly was stupid. Well, it's stupid. Taking unnecessary risk would land you in prison immediately. One bad move and how, and one badly advised move by Yami would have the Shiasai Kai kissing goodbye to freedom. Shit, he was in deep here. And they knew, and they knew what they were doing by asking him to plan this. To figure out how to escape the clutches. Oh my god. He essentially put him on the line for things. It essentially put him on the line if things went south. Damn it! You know that. You you'd know that, wouldn't you? Garen, Garen grinned and Izuku scoffed in return. Of course he did, but that wasn't all. I know enough that unnecessary risk and unplanned action differ enough. Differ enough not to have my ass hauled in the nearest police station. He didn't act he didn't actively seek out the ankle in front of the heroes. He just had a bad habit of being not in the right place and meeting Eraserhead many times to his many too many times for his comfort. Or was that a curse? Now that's all now that's all of Mustafa was looking for you I'd relook that. Now that now that's all of Mustafu. It's Mustafu is looking for you and I'd relook that. Giran, shut up. Izuku snorted to himself. He knew that's all he knew that all right. Aye aye boss. Izuku had escaped the bar an hour af- an hour later, filled to the brim with information he was itching to du- dive into right away. The plan he had to advise was complicated in many ways. In retrospect, this was far tamer than Izuku initially thought. He, or maybe he was just trying to calm himself down because looking at at it before another more objective, for another objective side, he was put in a spot he had no escape. His skill would be put in the put to the test with his freedom on a line, especially when especially when he was the one disrupting the flow of trigger as of late. He wasn't sure if anyone knew about it. Giran was smart but and and if he didn't if he didn't know he didn't show. But then why she why would he shy why would she Hazaikai ask for him? If they knew especially when dealing with the whole truck full of drugs, why would a, what, 
and the drugs, which was more, much more money than Izuku could even imagine. It was a bit too complicated of a situation for Izuku to feel comfortable holding the wad of cash in his pocket. That was just a half of the upfront half, but enough to make his life easy for the next two months, even if he paid the apartment himself and his dad didn't support him at all. Pushing a panic away, he let himself make plans to, to buy everything he needed lately. He could curse himself out for being stupid and impulsive, accepting a job because he needed money, not thinking about the consequences later. Maybe his way home across the roofs was far more enjoyable than the night had set in the rain, and rain started pouring down. It meant fewer heroes and more freedom to him, even if jumping roof to roof resulted in a slip of foot and tumble down meeting a hard ground. The edge was very slippery, but he didn't let himself hesitate on every jump he made. If he fell, then there was nothing he could do but accept it. Izuku had slipped off his mask, tucking it in his pocket with cash. Idly, he ran his hand through his hair, and he came back with his stained black hands. Right, the color was running now, and the rain was making it, making its round the city. The rain was making it its rounds around the city. He threw his hoodie. All true, although he, it didn't help much from getting his bangs wet and his green curls shining true. It'd be, it'd be all well if not for the um, for one thing. A very prominent, familiar figure landed beside him softly on the roof. Suku so took a breath on the survey, on the survey, the surroundings. His kid heart. His heart jumped to his throat when the pro hero approached him with determined eyes. Kid? He said, and Izuku didn't know what to do. But be Yami or Izuku. He didn't have his mask, his air color was running, but his contacts were still in. He had his bad for fuck's sake. Izuku reached reach for his mask, he not finding it in his pocket, and cursed. Of course it would have fallen out. Of course that would happen only to him. Of course, he would be caught by Razor Head in a position where he'd expose himself if he said or did the wrong thing. Shit. He, hey, hey, Izuku mumbled, and a silence stretched a bit too long for the hero in question who stayed a few brief steps away from him. What are you doing up here, Yami? Izuku bit his lip, trying to compose himself. Utter. Okay, if he could just get his contacts out, he could play this off as Izuku. Maybe he could leave his bat on the ground without drawing attention to it. It was dark enough It was dark enough for it not to be seen. He held it in front of him, make, taking a shaky breath. Okay, he was fine. Yami? Izuku let out it sounded like a question, like he didn't know the, the person Eraserhead was talking about. Eraser hummed behind him and Izuku dug his fingers into his eyes moving quick yet clumsy. It stung like a bitch, but he got the contacts out a few seconds, the silence stretched between him, between them once again. With watery eyes, hand squishing his contacts between his hands, most definitely running them, ru ruining them, he turned around catching Eraserhead's gaze. His bad, his bad clattered softly behind him. Fuck, it's lit out. Who's Yami? He tilted his head, letting a few tears roll down his cheek because the wind blew attacking both of his cheeks and irritated his eyes. Yeah, maybe not the best idea as I was white in his eyes, his stance becoming more alert. Well, at least it drove the hero's attention away from his back. So maybe the greatest idea he's ever had. Izuku almost cried for, almost cried for real. Izuku reached out to wipe his face with his sleeve of his hoodie, pushing the contacts in, into his back pocket of his pants, accepting the defeat. He would just go buy new ones. There were old ones and the color faded just faded too much for his liking. Dobby had commented on, on that and Izuku had retrieved them from his apartment this morning. Who knew Dobby had contact solution in proper cases? Turns out the bastard is nearsighted as hell. At least he had the money to buy better ones. Pro pros and cons. 
Shit, Aizawa cursed. Approached Izuku, only stopped one step away from him. Izuku sniffled, mucus filling his tr his nose. He hated how a few tears had had him looking like he'd cried hours before that. If he'd been breaking down, unable to stop the flow of tears because something hurt so much, tears shed all hurt so much, tears shed all the boiling emotions. Yeah, I'm fine. Izuku coughed in his hands and pulled the hoodie tighter around his head, hoping to hide his hair. Why must he always meet the hero when he's gotten out of his job as Yami? At least he didn't choose some wild color. So he must. So he must. Why must he always meet the hero when he just gotten out of his job as Yami? He didn't. At least he didn't choose some wild colors for his disguise. Otherwise, hiding this shit would have been so godfully awful. The bad though, he hoped he could make the hero go away. He wasn't exactly clean, keen on leaving it here tonight and having to go out in the way, go out of his way to retrieve it. He still had his small knife, of course, but the bad was more to his liking. He grew really attached to it. Then why are you crying? Allergies? You could try it. It was May after all. Cold May because of that. And because of that, as far as he knew, this year was tame. On, this year was tame on them, and he didn't really get those anyway. Yusuke was prone to allergies, but wasn't prone to allergies. But Eraserhead had no way of knowing that. Izawa only sighed, reaching in the back of his pocket with tissue, which Yusuke ac accepted. He didn't want to go home with a snotty nose and po and poached cheeks like like from a few shed tears. Why aren't you home, problem child? He reached into his pocket, getting other tissues out. Izuku rapidly went through the first one. Izuku had simply accepted the second one, or he risked having a runny nose and embarrass himself right in front of another of the other hero beside anything else. Izuku shrugged as he remembered that he, that he had to give an answer, but what would he say? Are you mad at me? Aizawa asked, and Izuku hiccuped. Feeling a swell of tears in his eyes, this time for real, he closed them briefly, taking a deep breath. He could he hated when people asked asked about emotions, about this about stuff like that. He just burst into tears immediately and it was reaction he couldn't control, not as Izuku at least. I don't know, Aizawa. If I stalk you if I stalk you, got your name, then searched up info from the official database and tried to use it against you, wouldn't you be? Izuku wasn't mad though. Hurt? Yes. No. He didn't stay mad, be maybe a bit vengeful, but that was something only considered when dealing with villains. Aizawa, he he wouldn't do that to Izuku. He could hold a grudge against All Might on the other hand, but that was a different story. I'm sorry, kid. I overstepped my boundaries. He did, but he couldn't hold on hold it. He couldn't hold it against him. No matter how much he tried, he wanted to distance himself, and yet something always made him made him always look made him look at it eraser head the hero in front of him and hope for something that was that's something that would pull him out his eyes his emotions have been all over the place in a few week few past weeks it's fine izuku said despite not being not being true they both knew, but Izuku only dragged his feeling being brushed off, so he just let it sweep under the rug. It was easy to it was easier that way, although Aizawa disagreed. No, it's not. You don't have to adjust the adults messing up because you're younger. You have the right to you have you have the right to own us to our fuck ups and I overstepped and I want to atone for that. So what can I do? Izuku, what can I do, Izuku, to make it up to you? What? Even he knew that Aizawa was right. That Izuku shouldn't take shit from adults like this. He didn't like villain rule. He didn't like let villain rules him around. He didn't let the villains rule him around, but that was villains who didn't know. But 14 for 
for him as a teen going to the middle school unsure what he really wanted the concept was foreign he i understand i understand that this was must be confusing and and not something you're familiar with but you can ask whatever if you want without the, my reach and i will try to do that as i crouched in front of izuku giving him a a warm smile. So, I got one wish or something. He raised his eyebrow. If you want to look at it that way, sure. The hero chuckled, and Izuku broke into a small a smile of his own. I wish for his, I have a wish from a racer head. I must have won the lottery. He snorted, swaying on his feet. He fell lightheaded from the from this. No, nope. no amount of information on this. She is high guy would have him feeling like this. The world was splitting apart and being healed simultaneously. Then having Aizawa say he had one wish from the hero. Keep that up and I'll take that back. Aizawa reached out, placing his hand on his shoulder, staying steadying him. The shrugging the shuddering breath that he took was enough for Aizawa to squeeze it tighter. No take backs, he grinned. Aizawa? Izuku heard the hero hum listen to him. What is it? Izuku let out a slow breath and had a, he had a question, a stupid question, a vaguely familiar one t he already asked Hiro once. Of course, it didn't end up well. With all that Izuku with all the shit Izuku found out as well, sometimes he understood that they had been a had been a fear dream fever dream, although Izuku was shattered in the end, and he trusted All Might, and he understood really, really, but he couldn't accept. But he just couldn't accept, and maybe he was being very hypocritical, only trying, only looking at this from his side, not viewing the objective, but he, he had the right to feel the way he did, didn't he? Just because All Might was a symbol of peace, did not automatically make him a god, did it? But what um, What about a racer head? Before him, a famous underground hero, Izuku, had a whole page dedicated, a whole page dedicated to, to, more like a whole notebook. Was it a racer head similar from his experience? He shouldn't ask. You should try to find out more about him, but it's just burnt with, with a need to know. Was it? What is it like to be? What is it like being a hero? He mumbled. There was a lot more he could ask, but this is a fortune that slipped out that he wanted to know. Once wanted to be one, he, but knowing, but knowing now that he couldn't. But now knowing, but knowing now, would be enough for him. Yearning for some. Something one once wished was hard to stop accepting that the future the future's not what he taught and it would be harsh. I mean, what is it like putting yourself on a line for others and knowing or having to choose between people to, who say first a uh, stupid question. Uh, sorry, it's, it's a stupid question. Zuku mumbled along when he caught his eyes tears full of questions. It's not stupid, Midoriya. Izuku bit his lip, realizing that Aizawa stuck, stuck to his outburst and called him by his family name instead really made him feel worse. Izuku, Izuku sighed, looking at the hero before he seemed drowned, drowned deep in his thoughts. Being a hero is exa exhausting, he finally said to Izuku's surprise. Exhausting? He knew that hero work wasn't all that fun. Smiling through the pain and exhaustion while trying to help others was anything but fun. When he was younger, he thought the opposite of that. It would, though, that a hero was someone who could be unbreakable. But he, he didn't realize how wrong he was until he was faced with reality of knowing that a smile was only a cover up, even for the current number one. A smile was only a mask to keep the world safe, a dazzling smile that cost him his life, yet he didn't expect Aizawa to admit it. 
Yep. He just nodded. Finally getting his crouch getting from getting from his crouch position and being stuck in front of Izuku for the longest for the longest while gazing out of the city. Sleep is nice, conflict countless dis- disasters, nightmares, kids hanging out on roofs, PTSD, you name it. He glanced briefly at the kid part and Izuku chuckled dryly. Yeah, he was a problem. Then why? Izawa held his hand. I didn't finish. Sorry. <laughs> Izuku waved and continued. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say being a hero was something I viewed as positive in my life. With my work, I had to work extra hard to be able to stand on the same stage as as many others. Others, I very sure was a good crew, but as much as Shin, as Shinzo with his mind control, they had to rely a lot on the, on their own body and raw strength. Eraser Head wasn't a great hero because he erased some quirks. He was a great hero because he worked for it in building his body. Izuku really understood that. He hence. Hence that he was helping Shinzo, who knows the same tactics, just like Aizawa. Maybe if Shinzo got into UA, he would get some assistance regards, in regards to that. It's not fun, it's not easy, especially as an underground hero. It, If I had the chance to travel back in time, I think I'd, made, I'd do many things differently. Aizawa sighed, looking down and glancing towards Suku. But being a hero lets me have moments like this. Like these? Izuku, ra- uh, ra- Izuku raised his eyebrow, unsure what the hero was referring to. Yeah, look, Midoriya. What do you see? He gestured. The sight over the rooftop. A city. I see a quiet block of people sleeping peacefully because I'm out here and they trust me enough to take care of any danger coming their way. It's not some. It's not saying that I'm able to save everyone, nor take take down every villain I come across. I'm just human, and humans have limits. Izuku, bread hitch. Being a, a hero is realistic. How, being a hero, realizing how better the world is, and still trying to change it. It's, if not change, change them from getting worse. No. If not change, then stop them from getting worse. It was not about it was not about saving people and having to choose better. It's about trusting yourself to stand despite the choice. Aizawa concluded Izuku had swam. He knew how bitter the world was, and what did he do? Make it worse? I don't think I really get it. He laughed. His voice cracking. He didn't get it. Not as a hero. He didn't he didn't get it. Not as a hero, he didn't get it. He just knew destruction. He knew only the bitterness. That's all right. It's something one can understand unless experienced themselves. I didn't really get it until a few years into my career, despite seeing someone die, even after I got my pro license. Despite family, despite falling, fa- despite failing many and saving just as much, it took me a while to find to. It took me a while. A while to really figure that much out. Izuku took a deep breath, trying to come across, trying to compose himself. He licked his lips, peering into the sky, realizing that the sky was clear, no gray clouds in sight. Rain disappeared in the horizon. He breathed out, breathed out, and what if he knew about someone who needed saving and doing nothing? He gulped. What, what about a cry for help so silent, but loud, in front of a villain? D- Izuku didn't know, didn't mean to really seek it, but maybe he should consider. It ha, it's, a what if because, I'd never let that happen. Izuku nodded, pushing away the toss lingering. He should forget it. He chose this for himself, to be a villain, a vigilante, whatever. He couldn't hope for a choice in the matter. He knew the moment he knew the moment he lies his lies get out, he's gets out, he'd be behind bars in the instant. Just like that, he whispered. Just like that. The hero nodded. Izuku let out a, t- a long tear roll down his ear. His cheek. 
but maybe just one night he let himself hope he was nothing but hopeful after all. A dreamer, a kid stuck in his own little fantasy. Aizawa, the hero grunted. Izuku collected the courage he needed to remind him to pick up the bat tomorrow and look at Aizawa who was waiting patiently holding another tissue out for Izuku to take. My wish is, can we get the ramen at, the, at that place? Sure, he smiled, grabbing the tissue and promised himself to indulge just this time and then let go. So this was the end of chapter 8. It was really nice. Um, also, Izuku's getting himself into way too much shit, like, dude, why? But at the same time, like, you know, mm. anyway, we'll find out what happens next, um, on chapter 9. I will probably record this later, either before work or after work. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and have a lovely day, night, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever, whenever it is. Bye!